Downriggers have a long history of helping Great Lakes anglers deliver plugs and spoons to deepwater trout and salmon, but they're equally effective for walleye fishing in deep stained waters across the Midwest. Let's join Fish Ed host John Thielen and fellow guide Mike Christensen on Mighty Lake of the Woods as they reveal an easy yet effective system for downrigging crankbaits. There's a fish. That might be a decent one, huh? Uh, a little, yeah. yeah better, a little bit better? Good. It's not much. I'm gonna spin this boat here, bud. Okay. Just a little bit. Be a net fish. Oh, yeah. That's a good way to start our day right here. <laughs> That's, a neat thing. That. That's a neat thing about crankbaits. Mike says to me halfway in, oh, he's not much. <laughs> That's a nice walleye right there, anywhere you go. We're fishing crankbaits today, and there's a lot of different ways you can fish cranks. Today, we just so happen to be pulling them on downriggers. But one of the neatest things about pulling crankbaits is they just flat out catch fish because they allow you to cover ground. And a lot of times, your biggest fish end up eating crankbaits. And here's why they do it. It's an aggressive tactic. It's a tactic that when that bait comes by, they can eat on both aggression and hunger. So it makes it just a, a dynamite way to catch numbers and bigger fish. But there's a lot of tips and tricks that go into how we pull our crankbaits. And just because we're using downriggers today doesn't mean that we don't use the same tips and tricks week in and week out, whether we're pulling lead core or three ways or long line or whatever it may be. That right there is a great way to start the day. Stay right where you're at. There's a whole bunch of great stuff coming up that's gonna help you catch more fish next time you're out pulling cranks. Let's throw that guy in the well and get back to the water, bud. There's a lot of different ways that you can get lures down deep. Today we're, we're fishing some pretty, pretty deep water. You know, I've run anywhere from 26 feet. I'm sliding out here and we're just gonna take a look out here deeper in this 30 foot of water. But all said and done, you can always get a crankbait down deep. Now today we, we chose to use downriggers. We're fishing a, a body of water that's very tannic. And when I say tannic, what I mean is the color is really, really dark. So these downrigger balls, they don't bother the fish at all coming by there. But if we were in a clearer body of water, what I'd be doing right now is one of several different things. One, I'd either be long lining and relying on the dive curve of the lure to actually get me down there. So you take this Lindy Wally Shad, this lure right here dives to about 13 feet. So if I were fishing 13 feet or less, I would know that I can just long line monofilament or a super line and I'm gonna be able to get this down there. But if I'm, if I'm fishing all deeper like we are today, all you gotta do is one of several things. One, you can put this behind a bottom bouncer and you can get that bottom bouncer down there and you're able to fish deeper than what that dive curve is. You could also do it with a snap weight or you could do it with lead core line. We, we're just choosing downriggers today, but there's a lot of different ways to get crankbaits down to any depth it is that you're looking to fish. There you go. Got him? Yep. Ooh, good fish, huh? Yeah. Good. Let me know if you need me to slow down at all. I think this is one of the neatest things about pulling crankbaits too is the ability to not only cover ground but trigger these big fish. And we're doing it with a variety of tactics today, but one of the most important parts of what we're doing today is making sure that we're fishing lures that match the forage base in this body of water. Oh yeah, that's a big walleye right there. Look at that, let's make sure we get this one, huh? But matching the forage base is just so, so important when you're pulling cranks. Because if you can do that, this fish right here, he doesn't have to think about it. He can just go ahead and eat it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this fish down. I'm gonna let Mike deal with that fish and be real careful there to not get hooked. And then what I wanna do, look at that. That's an awesome walleye right there. But I wanna show you a couple of the different lures we're using to explain to you why we're using them. What Mike's using here is emulating a shiner, and I don't think there's anything better. I mean, when you look at that lure, I don't think there's anything better at emulating a shiner than that lure right there. That's the Lindy Wally Demon. I'm gonna show you another one of them here. Here's the same thing, it's just in a different color. But you can see by this size, this is real similar to the shiner base that these fish are eating in this body of water right now. That's a great fish, bud. Get her back? Yeah, let's go ahead and get that fish back in the water, and then we'll talk a little bit more about some of these baits.
Here's another bait. Now, if we're in a little bit different situation than what we're in here, let's say we are on Mille Lacs Lake. Uh, one of these bodies of water where you got a whole bunch of tulabies or perch. That's when we're gonna switch over to something like this Wally Shed. Here's the difference, and let me explain to you why. If you look at that Wally Demon and its shape versus that Wally Shed, this looks like a shiner because it has a profile that's really, really short. It's not tall. But as soon as you get into your perch or your tulabies, you wanna get into something that's a lot higher because that's a, it's, it's just a, a bigger profile bait. All said and done, what you gotta remember is this. When these lures come past a fish, they don't have a lot of time to decipher everything. So the number one thing they're looking at is the profile and what they're seeing and what they're used to seeing. And what we're trying to do is just match that. And it can make a huge, huge difference. If you're using the wrong profile on any given day, you might go all day without catching fish. Today, we're able to catch them because we're using the right stuff right from the get-go. John? Ooh, good one. Look at that. Perfect. I'm gonna just kinda hang on to the boat. You tell me when you're getting close, okay? And I'll scoop them up for you. You got a bite too, John. Mine came off, which is probably all just fine because I think what Mike's got here is a pretty good one. Good keeper or hair big? Ah, hey. oh, it's good fish. Look at how he ate that crank. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that, what a great way to wrap up the day. That is a great fish, I got him right there for you so you're not even tangled in the net. Look at that fish, boy did he eat that crankbait, look at that. <laughs> you know you got him fooled when they eat it like that. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Get dialed into a bite from a standpoint of making sure that these fish honestly believe they're eating the real thing. And if you look at how we've cycled through crankbaits today and how we've done what we're doing, I've done a lot of changing. Mike's done more catching as soon as he got dialed into that exact crank right there. And he's actually had a better day just by making sure he's using the right one. The Wally Demon was what was hot today. That's a beautiful wall and a great way to wrap up the day. Remember this, you can catch a lot of fish on crankbaits. You can catch your keepers, you can catch your eaters, you can catch your big ones, you can catch a lot of little fish. It's just one of the best tactics out there. Get out there and pull some crankbaits this summer because it's gonna give you the opportunity to do what we've done today and it's a ton of fun.